The Southern Poverty Law Center is a legal advocacy organization that positions itself as a kind of whistleblower against the forces of hate and bigotry. In fact, if you go to their website, you'll see a specific list of issues they've taken on over the decades. The rights of immigrants, the rights of children, LGBT issues, economic justice, fighting for the poor and the disadvantaged, addressing problems with our criminal justice system, that kind of thing. The SPLC was founded back in 1971 as a civil rights law firm based in Montgomery, Alabama, founded by a couple of civil rights activists, Morris Dees and Joseph Levin. And as I understand it, it doesn't charge its clients legal fees. It doesn't take a percentage of any judgments or settlements. It simply funds itself through direct mail campaigns that solicit donations. Perhaps most famously, the SPLC started by going after white supremacist groups in the late 1970s. In fact, they started a program called Klan Watch, which just kept a close eye on white supremacist groups like the KKK and others across the country. Of course, many of these groups pushed back. There were reprisals. The SPLC office was firebombed at one point. There have been death threats and intimidation, and that has continued off and on throughout the decades. But the Southern Poverty Law Center, in many instances, has been, I think, an important player in the civil rights game, in the human rights game, being an advocate for those who simply didn't have the resources to be an advocate for themselves, winning often landmark settlements in court battles against hate groups across the United States. The SPLC keeps a list of various hate groups. Its website says it's tracking more than 1,600 extremist groups across the U.S., Klan groups, neo-Nazi groups, racists, black separatists, anti-government militias, and many, many others. Now, there are discussions to be had about the subjective nature of lists, who's on the lists, who populates the lists. But the larger point I'm making here is that the SPLC posts these lists while waving a banner of tolerance and justice for all. Certainly not immune from legitimate criticism from time to time, but in the past, in so many cases... The SPLC seems to have been on the right side of history, which is why so many of us were just stunned when the SPLC suddenly jumped the shark and listed Ayan Hirsi Ali and Majid Nawaz as anti-Muslim extremists. Ayan Hirsi Ali escaped fundamentalist Islam and is a human rights advocate. Majid Nawaz works as a reformer to cultivate what he calls a secular Islam, certainly a more peaceful Islam. You know, there's a saying out there which says, if you have to distance yourself from the fundamentals of your religion, there's a problem with your religion's fundamentals. And over the centuries, my former faith, Christianity, had to distance itself from its own fundamentals, the literal interpretations of the worst parts of its own sacred scriptures, of its own Bible, and its reformation, its at least partial enlightenment was the result of what? Skepticism and criticism and conflict and outrage and even ridicule and mockery. Immoral ideas criticized because they are immoral. Ridiculous ideas lampooned because they are ridiculous. Today, outside of its extreme fringes, Christianity practices a much different, a much more peaceful, a much less bloody and barbaric flavor of Christianity than our ancestors did. It largely no longer mutes the voices of women, or embraces slavery, or stones disobedient kids, or executes adulterers, or torches homosexuals, or coerces the unbeliever into accepting Jesus at the tip of a sword. Contemporary Christians have become more civilized and enlightened than the Bible they keep on their mantles and nightstands. Ayan Hirsi Ali and Majid Nawaz are working and acting and speaking in the same way in relation to Islam a religion which will see much of its reformation through criticism, certainly through discussion. When Ayan Hirsi Ali says that the Prophet Muhammad, having sex with a nine-year-old bride, would constitute pedophilia, she's not promoting hate, she's speaking out against pedophilia, and she's quoting specific scriptures against specific laws, speaking as an advocate for children, many of whom today see themselves locked in arranged marriages at single-digit ages, excused under the umbrella of sacred Islam. Criticizing this is not hate speech unless we're talking about the hate of really bad ideas. Majid Nawaz is still a Muslim, 
He was once sent to prison for being involved with an Islamist group, an extreme group. He experienced his own enlightenment, which caused him to renounce fundamentalism, the militant, hard lines of Islam that declare Islam the only idea worth discussing or believing, Islam that makes superstitious ideas the rules for governing, Islam that punishes questions and dissent and satire and free speech and the liberated mind, Islam that threatens apostasy with prison or torture. Exposing bad ideas is what good people do, and we do this through speech. When Ayan Hirsi Ali and Majid Nawaz call out radical Islam and Islamic extremists, this does not make them extremists themselves. Nor should either of these two be inappropriately labeled because the Southern Poverty Law Center can't tell the difference between hating injustice and hating your fellow human beings. The difference between a Klan member lynching a black teenager and an ex-Muslim declaring from her own horrifying personal experience that genital mutilation, for reasons religious or otherwise, is barbaric and cruel, those are different. Ayan lives her life under the shadow of death threats by the very fundamentalism that the SPLC is apparently trying to protect and defend. And she's the problem? Majid Nawaz still thinks that Islam is a religion of peace, somehow. And he's an Islamophobe? It makes no sense. Sarah Hader is co-founder of Ex-Muslims of North America. She recently wrote an article titled, Principles in Politics, the Southern Poverty Law Center Loses the Plot. In regard to the SPLC's recent actions, she said this, and I quote, This report is an example of the careless reactionary response by the American media, on both the right and the left, to the challenge posed by this religion. In the past, the Southern Poverty Law Center has built a reputation among progressives for identifying and monitoring the activities of domestic hate groups. With this report, it has tarnished its reputation and joined the ranks of the hate mongers it purports to combat. Sarah Hader's Twitter feed recently asked the SPLC to add her name to the list. You know, if they're going to list as extreme the voices of criticism, the voices of dissent, the voices of human right to advocacy, the voices asking for a more reasonable, civilized, peaceful Islam. She asked for the honor of being included among those names with the hashtag SPLC add me to. Robert Greene Ingersoll once famously said, the more false we destroy, the more room there will be for the true. And I have to wonder if Ingersoll, the vocal critic of bad religious ideas and a proponent of free thought, would have seen his name listed under the word extremist by the SPLC. And if he too might have declared, fine, if that's your criteria, please add me too.